Hey everybody, Dave here at the fly shop again. Uh, we're gonna tie a fly for you today. Um, this fly's been very popular lately on our river. Uh, peaches and cream um, imitates a small uh, pale morning dun. Um, a nymph. Um, we're tying it on a jig hook um, with a slotted tungsten bead. Um, these have gotten really popular in the last uh, last couple of years. Uh, the reason why a jig hook um, works so well is because um, your riding hook point up would be your obvious you know reason. You keel it in a way where um, where when you put this slotted tungsten bead on your hook, it uh, it keels the hook point up. So there's a few benefits there. Um, it seems like you're always hooking the fish in the top of the lip, which is, you know, as you all know, is um, really easy for the release and things like that. Um, another really um, obvious um, advantage is um, you're not going to hook up on absolutely everything you, you know, you're bumping across the bottom all the time or a lot of the times, and you're not going to hook up on every little thing that you're uh, that you're um, going going over. Uh, one of the ones that's often overlooked that I think is one of the more important ones is, um, since I'm sharpening my hook points quite a bit actually, um, you're constantly dulling your hook point as it's bouncing across rocks. Um, it's just a part of the game. Um, after after t even 10 drifts, you can notice a difference if you do the scratch on your thumbnail. You scratch it with a with a hook that's, that's oriented down, um, like every other hook out there. Uh, most flies out there, um, and you're gonna notice you're gonna lose you're gonna lose um, some of that sharpness. Um, and I, what I mean by that nail test is I just take the I take the hook and just scratch my nail, and I kind of determine how sharp it is based on that. If it takes a lot to really get down in there, um, I need to, I need to hit it with my hook hone. Um, and we sell the Tiemco hook hone and and um, a few others, and they're all very good. Um, and I uh, important part of your uh, your. Um, fishing uh, tackle. Um, this completely uh, has changed the game. Um, lets you get down into stuff that you normally wouldn't have been able to. Um, and uh, another added benefit, this is already barbless. Um, we have to crimp all of our barbs here you know, and things like that on the sack and it just makes one less step. Um, one of the worst things ever is when you finish tying a fly and we've all done it. Um, you crimp your barb and break your hook point off of your, your fly you just took 15 minutes to tie. It's terrible. Um, so having a barbless hook is a, is a massive advantage. I've been tying on these exclusively for the past uh, couple months. Um, Fireholes uh, 516 jig hook. It's a um, barbless with a tactical hook point. They're great, great, great hooks. You get 36 hooks for $7.25. Look into these if you haven't already. Um, right now I'm tying on the uh, solely because I, we've sold out of these in our um, most of our sizes. Um, so I'm uh, I'm tying today on the C400 BL, which is a barbless uh, umqua hook, um, competition hook, um, and it is barbless as well. So it's pretty similar to this one right here. Um, so the peaches of cream, uh, we're gonna use. Everybody has some of this, I'm sure. Mallard flank dyed that lemon or wood duck or whatever color you uh, you prefer to call it. Um, you could use wood duck as well. Uh, it tends to be a little pricier than just dyed mallard. And it, for this fly, it's going to work about the same. I tend to hoard all of my wood duck for my Catskill upright dry um, dry wings and stuff. So um, so I'm just going to use mallard flank today on my subsurface uh, my subsurface pattern. Um, this is a size 16. Um, this is that C400 BL from Umqua. Um, on there is a slotted tungsten um, bead 2.3 millimeter. Um, I use the metric system, sorry all you imperial system guys out there. Uh, but it's a 2.3 millimeter um, slotted tungsten in gold. And we're going to use Mercer's, this is the actual what they're using on that pattern. Um, Mercer's uh, buggy nymph dubbing in the light Cahill color. And that is about it other than a little piece of gold wire. This is a brassy size for my size 16 that um, shows up real nice. It's not too thin, not too thick. I like the brassy on a size 16 to a 14 about. Um, so yeah, we'll start like this. We're just gonna start our thread like normal. Oh, I forgot about thread. This is 70 denier, burnt orange, okay? So let's make sure that little slot's in there, right? Start our thread.
work your way back to about where that hook bend starts. Then I'm gonna select my tail fibers here off of this. I'm gonna go near the tip because just like any other feather, it gets kind of marabou-y and webby towards the bottom. And I don't necessarily want that stuff. I do kind of want it to splay out and things like that. So I'm gonna shoot for kind of up towards the top and I'm gonna ditch any broken tips that may be in there, try to anyways. I'm gonna straighten them out on the actual feather because then I know that they're gonna be straight when I cut it. All right, I'm gonna measure my length, about one, um, right around the length of the hook shank. So I'm gonna measure right there. I'm gonna get my measurement and I'm gonna grab right about where I need to tie in. All right, so we're just gonna do one little loose wrap here to get her in place. All right, that's that. If you choose to go behind the tail, a lot of people like to do that to kind of splay it up, sort of. Um, I'm not gonna worry about that, doing that today. But we're just gonna wrap forward like this. We're gonna tie down so we don't have a, a um, thicker point in the back. We want it to be a nice tapered body. So then I'm just gonna work my way back to that tie-in point on the tail. Okay, I'm gonna grab my light olive. Whoa, we're not gonna do that yet. We've got to tie our ribbon. All right, I'm gonna tie in my gold piece of brassy ultra wire. Same thing, I'm gonna run this all the way up to the bead. Because I'm then I have a nice even, I have a nice even body to build my taper on rather than have a big tie-in point on the back. So I run it all the way up the hook shank, right up into the bead. Okay. So now our wire's tied in. Let's put that in our material clip in the back to get it out of our way. Okay. Now, something that a lot of people do is they take a big old clump like this, and they uh, they just go like this and just strap it right to the right to the thread and it's just a big chunk on there. It's really hard to wrap, it's gonna fall off. Um, what I do is I wrap, I do a little, little at a time. I mean a tiny amount, a wisp like this, especially for the back because it's gonna be tapered um, um, to its smallest point kind of in the back. And then you always twist this on one way. You won't need dubbing wax and, and um, for a lot of your patterns, you won't even need it. Unless you're touch dubbing, you won't need it. If you're twisting it on like this, it locks right into place, especially when you wrap it. So that's all I need. Just enough to cover that thread, um, that orange thread. And if you see that orange through a little bit, that's actually perfect. Um, but this should come out perfect here. And I'm just doing a little at a time, okay? And just add more as I need it. Little at a time is key. You can start adding a little more to your thread once you work your way up into the fatter part of the taper here. But it's a real small amount and I always spin it on there clockwise. It doesn't, I don't think it matters which way you spin as long as you always spin it on in the same direction. Because if you spin it on one way and then twist it the other way, if you spin it on clockwise and then twist it off counterclock or twist it again counterclockwise, all your work is just uh, undone. So we're almost up there. Go right to the end of the, right to the back of this bead here. All right, I'm gonna build up a little more of a taper up front here. Kind of match that, the um, width of the bead, approximately, and let's see, a little more. Right, that's gonna take me right up in there. Okay, so now, I'm going to just throw a half hitch here because now all I have to do is wrap my bead forward and this fly is done. I'm just going to do this because I I'm, I use the rotary function on my vise. And um, so I'm just going to grab my, my wire rib here. We'll fix that bead quick. All right. 
And I'm just gonna wrap my rib. Right up to uh, the bottom of that bead. I'm gonna trap that rib. Two or three wraps is totally fine. Now, I'll also say this as a little tip. I never cut this. You wanna dull your scissors really quick, you start cutting wire, you start cutting tinsel with it. Um, I do the old helicopter. I wonder if I can move this to the, yeah, there we go. So what I do, and I'm sure um, a lot of you have seen this before, a lot of you use it. Um, I actually just sit here and wiggle this thing back and forth right on that tie-in point, and it'll pop right off. Whoops, not in the right spot that time. But usually, <laughs> it pops off perfect and you won't have to dull your scissors. I'm gonna cheat, I'm gonna add a little bit more weight to this fly. I'm gonna tie it into my head just like that, I just folded it over. It's a little, uh, one of my little secret shortcut things here. Rewrap it down, it's totally fine. It's gonna stay there just fine. Um, so at this point, uh, my fly's finished other than my whip finish. So I'm gonna do a one, two, three turner, and then I like to give it a little Security measure since I don't use head cement all the time. One, two, three turner. And I'm gonna finish it off. And I'm gonna cut my thread off. And then I'm golden. So from here I can take my, you know, the back side of my scissors or my dubbing brush tool if um, if I would have brought mine with me. This is what I'd be using. But you can kind of tease out these fibers in the back and stuff and make it really nice and buggy. Pick out the long ones so it doesn't look too funky. But uh, that is the peaches and cream. It's a great little pale morning done imitation. Rides hook point up, so it's gonna it's gonna sit like this in the water column. Um, so again, it's not gonna dull your hook point. It's not gonna catch up on everything that it it decides to float past. And um, it's an absolutely deadly pattern. And as you can see, it takes it's very fast little tie. So it's a great little guide guide fly if you'd like calling them that just a real quick effective patterns that you don't mind if you throw a few in a couple trees and um you know it's a three four minute tie once you get them down to uh down to it so i hope you guys enjoyed the uh peaches and cream if you have any other questions um on uh on jig hooks or or tying this pattern or any patterns like it or any pattern under the sun for that matter um, if i don't know it i'll find somebody here who does and we will uh, we'll square you up. So don't hesitate to holler, give us a call, send us emails, all that kind of stuff. And uh, we'll do our best to help you out. Hope you guys have a good rest of your week. And uh, tight lines. Talk to you later.